Welcome to the course. In this short lecture, I'll give you an overview of the course and explain how it's structured. In the first section, we're just going to cover some of the basic housekeeping items. So in this lecture, I'll mention the prerequisites for this course and clearly state what you should have covered before taking the course. Now, after watching the next video, if you feel like you haven't covered the prerequisites, I would encourage you to circle back and complete the prerequisite course on plain trust analysis. I'll say a little bit more about this in the next lecture. In the final video in this short introductory section, I'll explain and demonstrate the installation of a set of Jupyter Notebook tools called MB Extensions. If you've come from my course on beam and frame analysis, you'll already have covered this, but for people coming directly from the plain trust analysis course, uh, you will want to watch this lecture. Now, with that said, installing these extensions, MB Extensions, it's completely optional and it's not actually needed to follow along with the course. In section two, we're going to explain exactly how we can expand the direct stiffness method from two dimensions into three dimensions. Now, this will be a theory section, but it's well worth watching so that you fully understand the foundations of what we're going to be doing for the rest of the course. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that this expansion is a lot more straightforward than you might imagine. After explaining the underlying theory in section two, in section three, we're going to actually implement the required changes to our code. Now, our starting point here is the code we developed for the plain trust analysis course. We'll work our way systematically through that code over the course of a few videos and tackle each of the amendments one by one, explaining as we go. In section four, we're going to make a couple of small changes to our code that improve its usability. This is a short section in which we implement a color map to better visualize the magnitude of member forces and we'll also implement some user interface widgets to make manipulation of our plots a little bit easier. With these modifications, we'll have successfully modified our code and technically we'll have completed all of the modifications that we need to make. From here on, our efforts are going to be on making it easier to develop larger 3D structural models that play nicely with our Jupyter Notebook. So, in section 5, we dive headfirst into Blender, our 3D modeling software. Now, after getting Blender installed, I'll give you a whistle-stop tour of the interface and demonstrate some modeling tools to give you a sense of how we'll be using it to build our structural models. Blender is a huge program with a lot of functionality, but we'll keep things fairly focused here on just what we need to know to build our structural models. At this point, we'll have a very nice piece of structural analysis software in the form of our Jupyter Notebook. We also have a very powerful 3D modeling tool in which our structural models live. However, things really come to life when we start to move data between the two. So section six is all about facilitating that data transfer between Blender and our notebook and vice versa. Finally, in section seven, we take a victory lap and use our shiny new skills to model some interesting structures and run them through our 3D trust solver. We'll do some minor code development in section seven to further streamline our workflow between Blender and our Jupyter notebook. You'll also find it helpful to see more examples of how to take advantage of Blender's modeling capabilities. So that's the course in a nutshell. I hope you enjoy taking the course as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. By the end, you'll have some very nice knowledge, skills and tools to bring to bear on your own projects.